When you think about advertising your business, did you ever think that TV commercials would be accessible for you as a small business owner? Well, they are, but not in a traditional sense. And how it works today is much, much better for you. So today we're going to talk about YouTube ads, the modern, highly targeted, cost-effective TV commercial of the future. Incoma's Marketing Strategies is a podcast for small business owners hosted by Audrey Kirchner, co-founder and chief marketing strategist at Incoma, helping you navigate the world of marketing so that you can market your business in the right way, see growth, and thrive regardless of the industry you're in. To learn more about Incoma and what we do, ask a question or schedule a marketing evaluation, go to the website Incoma.com. That's I-N-K-Y-M-A.com. Listen to the show on your podcast player of choice, the Incoma website, or the Incoma YouTube channel. Just search for Incoma Marketing Strategies and you'll find what you need. So before we start talking about YouTube ads, couple housekeeping things as usual, the show notes are packed with info for you. Go to the website, Incoma.com, go into the show notes, And we have previous podcast episodes, articles, if they're applicable in the show notes. If I mention products or services or anything like that, I try to put those in the show notes as well. And we have a rough transcript of the entire podcast. So if there is a stat or something you want to go and look at again, you can use the show notes for that. So definitely go check it out when you're done listening. Also, if I mention products or services, we are usually a partner with that company. What that means is if you click on the link and you buy it, you're not paying any more than anyone else, but we get a small percentage back, probably about the equivalent of a cup of coffee in most cases. And so we really appreciate that. One, it allows us to keep creating free content for you. And plus you get to use the same tools that we use because we don't recommend anything unless we've tested it, used it, and like it ourselves. Okay, so now let's talk about YouTube ads. But why? Why are we having this conversation? That is an excellent question, and I want to start out with getting you really excited about the why. And I'm going to do that through stats today. So according to Statistica, they do lots and lots of stats. YouTube ads revenue, right? So it's a a specific revenue stream for YouTube, is almost matching Netflix entire revenue stream of 2021. And that is in the billions of dollars because people are using YouTube for general TV watching and entertainment more now than ever before. We're recording this in 2022. So, you know, these 21 stats, 19 stats that I'm going to kind of rattle off here are very applicable still. All major content producers, entertainment producers have YouTube channels now. The major networks, the minor networks, think about the History Channel, Peacock TV, which is a derivative of NBC, your sports teams like NFL, baseball, even the government all have their own YouTube channels and they've all realized that it is another means for them to disseminate their programming content. I have seen the History Channel put out full episodes of their TV shows onto YouTube to get more viewership. And then the government really utilized it, I thought, pretty well during the pandemic. So they would have their White House press briefings and they would stream them on YouTube so that you didn't have to go and watch them on the local network channel or anything. You could just go directly there, tune in when you want. And even in streaming, you can actually back up to the beginning if you're five, 10 minutes, 20 minutes late. So it's really cool. And the state I lived in at the time, the local government was doing it too. Everybody was utilizing everything they could. And so that's why I think we saw this nice bump for YouTube. And so that's why in advertising, we say advertise where your audience is. Your audience, they're on YouTube. I don't care what your audience is. I'm pretty sure they're on YouTube. And here's why. So in 2021, YouTube had 1.86 billion users, right? Not open accounts, registered users, actual users of the platform. Creators, they're uploading 500 minutes of video every single minute across the world. 500 minutes, that's a lot. And then in 2019, 1 billion hours of video was watched per day on YouTube. 
1 billion hours. So people are using it, they're logging in, they're doing their thing. And then for here in the United States, 85% of US internet users watch YouTube videos at least once per day. So talk about frequency. So you have total number of people, you have hours watched, and then you have frequency. They're not going in once a month and binging. They're in there every single day. And that's why I say it doesn't matter who your target audience is, they're probably using YouTube. And the majority of the videos on YouTube are monetized. And what this means is that the creators are allowing YouTube to put videos in the beginning, in the middle, and at the end, or sometimes even all three, depending on how long the broadcast is on the videos. And so when I say YouTube ads and TV commercials, this is what I'm talking about. That video that plays before, in the middle, or after can be your video ad for your company. And what I love about this model is that not just YouTube makes money, the content creators get to make money too. If they set their channels up the right way, it's called monetizing the channel. And if they get enough followers and that sort of thing is they get a little bit of that ad revenue that you're spending to put your video up. So it, it, it helps the content creator community too. And some of the better creators have made a whole entire living on this. Whereas if you did a TV commercial for the Super Bowl, the network's getting all that money, not the little guys. So now let's talk about what makes this accessible for you, the small business owner in your town and your area. So YouTube ads are really just like any other digital advertising. You're doing Facebook ads, you're doing search ads, display ads, LinkedIn ads, TikTok, Instagram. This is no different than that. You can select how much ad budget you want to spend per day. So while if traditional networks with TV commercials, you were spending right now in today's money about $100,000 per 30 second ad spot, YouTube ads, you can run for as little as $5 a day, which is $150 a month. You're probably gonna wanna do a little more than that, but cost of entry, test things out, you can certainly do it because it's just like the other digital ad platforms where you're paying per impression and impressions are sense, right? 50 cents, 20 cents in those ranges. And so there's no cost barrier if you're deciding to do digital advertising. Makes this highly accessible for you if you've got that budget. The other thing is that it's highly targeted, right? So you can target a geographic location down to a single zip code. You can pick personal demographics, male, females, families, age ranges. And then you can also select on keywords and buying interests. Google has this huge network of buying interests that is all based off of search results. They don't know that Jane searched for a dog collar. They know that this individual single session did these things and they attribute it back to a user. So it's all blind. They don't know who you are specifically. And Google is very committed to data privacy. So because of this, your ads are only showed to your target audience and based off of what they do and who they are, not what they're watching. So let's talk about this as an example. Let's say we have a pet supply company in Colorado Springs, Colorado. So our target area for something like this would be El Paso County, Colorado, which is the county that Colorado Springs is in. Or we could just pick Colorado Springs or maybe one zip code within a mile around my location. I'm going to do it based off of keywords, pet supplies and buyer intent. I can narrow that down. Maybe I want to do a specific campaign for dog collars, right? I'm running a special on dog collars right now. And so the person that meets this criteria, location, keyword, buyer intent, they may be searching the internet, did a little bit of shopping. They were looking at dog collars and then they go over to YouTube and maybe they're watching a football video or a barbecue grill video like what's the best barbecue grill to buy or how to smoke meat. Your ad for the dog collars will show up before that video as the commercial, as that five second ad spot. So that's what I mean by it's based off of their search content and search habits, not the specific video that your ad is going to play in front of, which is really powerful. And this all goes to the most wonderful thing Brand recall is infinitely better with video than it is with any other type of visual media, including text, including images, including just sticking the logo out there. When there's motion involved, our brains just suck it in. So I am going to talk to you about some video best practices. But before I do this, I want to stress the importance of this is not a one trick pony. 
right? You don't just run YouTube ad videos and people come flying into your store, buying your services. It still has to be part of a marketing mix for digital advertising because the journey that someone takes from not being a customer to being a customer isn't done through a single ad view and then a click through and then a phone call. There are other factors that have to happen in there. And so while you get great brand recall and awareness attention with the video, the actual click-through rates from the video are significantly less than if you were doing a display ad or a search ad. So you may want to combine a YouTube ad with a display ad because they get higher click-through rates. The buy buttons are right there. It's just more conducive to that. So don't just think of this as, I'm just going to run these and then I'm done. No, you got to have the mix and it has to feel like it's across multiple platforms, not just on YouTube. I actually talk about this marketing mix and those sort of things in episode 43 about digital ad platforms and budgets. And then episode 20, which is how to do digital advertising the right way. So go check those out. There are links in the show notes for you. Okay, so now let's go through some YouTube ad video best practices. Because ironically, what I've seen is in the bigger brands, What they do is they take their TV commercial and they slap it on YouTube and actually it doesn't work. And here's why. When you're watching a show on television or any place where you're forced to watch the entire ad, these work okay. These work like they're supposed to work. But the world of YouTube is a little different because the ad comes up and in five seconds, you get a little button where you can click away. And we all use that button, especially if the ad does not catch our attention. So the first five seconds of your ad have to grab that attention and stop the user from clicking that button. That button is the big difference between them hearing the rest of your ad or going to the video that they were queuing up to watch. And that five seconds goes fast. So if you start a video with, hi, my name is Audrey and I am the owner of Incoma, and then boop, you're gone don't even know what income is, don't even know or care who I am. So those first five seconds can't be started with something pithy. It really has to get down to what it is that wants them to buy. So in the example of our pet supply company, something like that could be get 25% off leather dog collars for your dog. New spring line is in right now. And then the rest of it can go off. You want to get that offer out there because if they're seeing the video, They're intent on buying a dog collar. And what you're doing is you're offering them a discount on premium dog collars. So keep that in mind. That's probably the most important thing when creating videos for this. The second thing is, is just like traditional commercials, you got to keep it short all around, 60, 90 seconds max. Your logo should be on every single frame of the video for that brand recall, awareness, and recognition. Because if they watch the video... Even if they saw one of your other ads first and they still saw your logo, again, video has more of a sticky quality to it. And yeah, they're going to say, oh yeah, maybe I remember that, but they watch the ad. Maybe they watch the entire ad. Even if they only watch five seconds of it, I guarantee you if they see it someplace else, that recall is going to be better. And that just reinforces everything. Targeting. So we talked about audience targeting and why this is so awesome, but I'm talking about making specific videos for those targets. So you can create different videos for your different audiences. I've actually seen Geico doing this, and I think it's cool, is that you can set up a YouTube ad for a specific geographic location, and then the video can reference that location. So let's say our pet supply company not only is in Colorado Springs, but they also have another store location in Denver. They can run two ads, one for the Springs, one for Denver, and then they can actually call out those areas in the ad. Hey, Colorado Springs, get 25% off leather dog collars. The spring line's in. Hey, Denver, get 25% off leather dog collars, right? That awareness, that personalization catches the attention. Oh my gosh, yeah, I'm in Denver. They're talking to me. So don't discount that. And it's a little more work, but if you're already running YouTube ads, I, I strongly suggest you target that down. And then you can even go crazy and do different types of testings where you're testing different videos against each other to see which one is actually producing more video watches or more clicksers. Because you do get clicksers, the question is how many? So the next best practice is figuring out what should be in the video, right? You get five seconds to start, maybe you get 60 seconds. What should it be? It depends on your campaign. So in the example I've been using, it's a special offer, that 25% off. But if it's the 
Christmas holiday season, maybe a holiday promotion, different ad, different promotion. And then if there's nothing going on, maybe if you're a brand new company, you might want to do general awareness of your overall services. Like if you're a general contractor, you'll want to put that in the ad. But again, make sure that your primary message is in that first five seconds. Go back to the how-tos of marketing and start with your strategy, your audience, and then your goals. What are you trying to do? and then derive the campaign from that. It'll be so much simpler. At the end of your video, give a little extra time within your timeframe, like that 60 second timeframe, give it three or four seconds, like for a nice end screen that has your name, your logo, your location, contact information, website address, because they can't click on it, you might wanna put a QR code in there because if they're watching it on a tablet, they may grab their phone and use the QR code. And then the reason to keep it up a little longer is to allow them to screen grab it. If they're watching it on a tablet and they see it come up and they're like, oh, I'm interested in that, but I want to watch my video, they'll screen grab it and they can look at it later. So those are your best practices for the actual video content itself. So hopefully I've gotten you intrigued and excited about creating YouTube ads. So now we're going to have a little bit longer of a take action section for you because there's actually quite a few things I want you to do now if you're ready to start creating these YouTube ads. So the first thing you need to do is to have a YouTube channel. If you don't have one, create one. It is free. When you run YouTube ads, they want your ad to be hosted as a video, just like all the other content that's out there on their platform. So think of this as if you do already post YouTube videos, great. You just throw those into the mix. Next thing you're going to do is create a Google ad account. Google it. The link comes up in the very first spot. This is where you're going to create your YouTube video ad. So under the Google ad umbrella, you can do search ads, display ads, Gmail ads, and YouTube ads are also an option. And this is where you're going to be doing all of that creating is inside the Google ads management account. Next thing I want you to do is create your 60 to 90 second video based off of the best practices we talked about. For video creation product tools, I've got a simple version, Canva. You can create beautiful ad videos, motion, overlay, all that good stuff in Canva. It's super easy to use. If you need something a little more sophisticated because maybe there's video footage that you took, pictures you want to inlay, you want to do a voiceover, anything like that, I recommend Adobe Premiere Pro. There's tons and tons of support out there for both of the platforms. We use them both. We use the more advanced version because we do different types of stuff for clients. But Canva is a really great workhorse because you can use it for social media post creation and you can do video editing with it and all sorts of good stuff. So both of those are linked in the show notes for you to click on and, and get if you don't already have them. The other thing I suggest you do here for video creation is listen to episode 52 where I talk about best practices for creating a professional video if you're going to be on camera or if you're going to be doing other things. Talk about lighting equipment. I talk about sound equipment, all that good stuff. And there's links in there to the equipment that I actually own for when I'm doing all my own producing. Next step, number four, and last step in the creation of the ad process is create your ad. Walk through the process in Google Ads Manager to create your ad. Again, base that off of your goals selecting language, the video, all that good stuff. There are videos out there on how to create a YouTube ad inside of Google Ad Manager, so I think you're covered. And then the last step that I want you to think about is because you have to put your ad video on your YouTube channel, you have now created organic video content that is searchable by Google. So you want to optimize it for organic search, free search, as well as set it up as your ad. So this is where you're going to give it a great name. You're going to give it a description, a title. You're going to want to tag it. If you create it vertically, you can actually hashtag it with shorts. And shorts is YouTube's version of TikTok, which is starting to take off by leaps and bounds. And I was listening to a couple of the keynote discussions that Google put out this week. And they're actually going to be investing more in shorts, including adding ads to shorts. Like you can see a TikTok ad, now you're going to see ads on shorts. So you can have a nice mix for this video of regular viewers, shorts viewers, and then advertisers. And then make sure you have links in the description as well. Links back to your website. If you have an offer code, make sure that gets put in there. That way, if someone's organically finding your video, they can also take action just like the paid ad guys do. 
And so there is a tool that we like to use specifically for YouTube video search engine optimization, and it's called TubeBuddy. You sign up for it and it actually gets embedded as part of the feature set within your YouTube account. So it can give you ideas on how to tag the content, what to do to optimize it for search. It's a really cool tool. I'm actually going to be doing an episode soon on a review of TubeBuddy and talk to you about all my favorite features and why I think it's awesome. So stay tuned for that as well. So here are my final thoughts for you on this topic. If you're already doing digital advertising, I really encourage you to test out the YouTube ads if you're not doing them and add it into your marketing mix. You can either add a little bit of budget to your existing digital ad budget, maybe siphon off 150, 200, couple hundred dollars a month because it is really the best way to generate awareness and brand recall because of the motion of the video. Our eyes are just naturally attracted and we pay attention to motion and video we can't not watch it. Even when that five seconds is up, we're still watching the video right up until we hit that button. And general awareness and brand recall is really the foundation of the behavior flow that gets consumers to buy. Whether it's services, products, there's a behavior flow that they naturally follow in the know, like, and trust process. And brand awareness and brand recall are our major steps in that. Don't discount them. So here at Incoma, we love to give back to the business community and we do it in a bunch of different ways now. If you go to Incoma.com, you can click on the button to schedule a 45 minute free consultation with me. We'll talk about whatever you want. We can talk about YouTube ads. We can talk about your website. We can talk about content marketing, whatever you want to talk about. That's what we're for. There's a contact form on the website. You can fill that out with a question or maybe you have a topic for the podcast. I love getting those and researching and putting the show together. And I'll give you a shout out for that. We have a brand new educational blog that launched a couple months ago called Marketing Masterminds. And here we review products. We provide processes for marketing. We go into deep dives, specific topics in articles. And then we're introducing video trainings, like how to trainings, like how to do social media, how to utilize this specific tool and not just fill this field out. But what we talk about is why you use the tool and how to implement it the right way. In addition to saying, make sure you have this box checked as part of that. So definitely go check out any or all of those, especially if you want to get in contact and start a conversation with us. We'd love to talk with you. If you like this content, if you found it helpful, share it with other business owners you know. If they're doing digital marketing, they may want to try it out YouTube as well. And then sharing this content helps the business community at large. And this is the reason why we here at Incoma we put this content out. We want the business community as a whole to grow and thrive together. Thanks so much for listening and have an amazing day. 